Hi guys, it's Andy from Awesome 3D Prints here again and uh, today I've got some ghosting issues in my CR10S and uh, I thought I'd try and troubleshoot them and show you what steps I took to fix them in the hope that it would help you guys fix your problems. I started off by printing a calibration cube which is a 20mm by 20mm calibration cube. They are on Thingiverse, I'll, I'll put a link in the description for you. Um, as you can see on the y-axis I'm getting quite a lot of ghosting which or echoing as it's also called which are these lines either side of the y above it and it, it's really bad. I'm only printing at 60 millimeters a second so not you know nothing crazy. Um, the x-axis is not too bad at all actually it's, it's pretty smooth there's a slight one down the edge of the x there and a, a slight line down the edge here but nothing that I can't live with you know it's, it's not awful. But the Y is really starting to do my head in. Every time I print something on the board, it's like it's got a curve in it. I'm getting echoes either side of the the, uh, the curve, which is which is awful. So the first step I did was to tighten the screws on the frame of the CR10S. I'll take you over to the printer, and you can see uh, you can see which which screws I tightened. Okay, I started by tightening these two here on this side and these two here on this side. Um, I also tightened the two on the bottom of the Z part of the frame on underneath side there and also the underneath side there. The two at the front of the frame weren't too bad. Um, the on the uprights they're a little little loose. The one on the right was slightly worse than the one on the left. And then I tightened the two on the top here and here. Again there was a slight amount of play. Um, nothing too 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 bad but you know it was worth a try. I'll go back over to the bench now. Alright here anyway, we are back at the bench. Um, again that's the first cube so I had to print another calibration cube to try and see if we could uh, see, what, see if it solved the problem at all. Oop, there we go, that's number one and number two. And as you can see, it made no difference at all, if anything. Well, no, it's not worse, I wouldn't have said, but it, it's certainly no better. Um, so, going in the wrong direction there. So, the next thing I did was I decided to check the belt tension, both the Y and the... the uh, X belt tension, even though the X isn't too bad. Um, whilst you're doing one, you might as well do the other. Again, I'll take you back across the printer and show you whereabouts that I, uh, the whereabouts and how to tighten the belt. To tighten the X-axis belt on the CR10S, also I believe it's the same on the end of three, but I haven't got an end of three, so I'm not sure. But at the end here, this is your tensioner. You have to slacken off these two bolts, pull it to the right, and when you think the tension's right, tighten the tighten both bolts again and give it a try with a calibration cube. One thing you might find is that if it's too loose you'll increase the ghosting, if it's too tight you'll cause binding which means the head will struggle to move backwards and forwards and that can cause different problems altogether so it's a bit of a game backwards and forwards till you get it right but once you've got it right you should hopefully see the ghosting significantly reduced or if you're lucky disappear completely and then on the x-axis it's a bit difficult because I'm printing at the moment but there's a screw either side here, one there and one the other side here. You slacken those off and then pull the, the tensioner towards you. Now with this one you've got to be a bit more careful because if you pull it out and angle it down so like the belt can catch on the inside of the frame here and if that happens you'll actually wear your belt out and cause some problems. So, but this has got a little bit of play up and down so as you pull it out if it's too close to the metal frame angle it up slightly and that will give you some clearance from the from the, uh, the metal frame then just tighten these bolts here again if it's too tight you'll cause binding if it's too loose you'll cause more ghosting so it's play play with it till you get it right okay back at my very messy bench again so so far we've done one and two and then so I printed another calibration cube after messing about with the belts and we'll go back to this one and this one this is number three and as you can see the ghosting actually has been improved quite a bit. Um, there's still still a, a reasonable amount there, but it's definitely better. There's not as much on this side of the Y, not as much above. There's still a little bit on this side, but generally it's nowhere near as bad as it was. So that's really good news. I'm really pleased with that. It means I'm heading in the right sort of direction. So the next thing was I did notice that the desk that my printer's on is a little bit wobbly. It's not, not the most stable. So I found these on... Thingiverse, again I'll, I'll put a link in the description but I don't advise using them but you're welcome to give it a try. They're vibration dampeners for the feet and you slot them underneath the rubber feet into the into the actual um, the hole and it's supposed to absorb some of the friction but it's 
yeah, they're, they're not massively flexible, and I printed it with a crappy filament because I just wanted to, you know, obviously it's it's a machine part, not for it's a it's sort of substance over style really. So I printed it quickly, and I put them on and printed another cube, and that's where cube number four comes in. Now I'll go back to cube number three. Yeah, there we go. And again, I looked at the thing, and as you can see, it's actually got worse. <laughs> so they didn't work at all. Um, yeah, it's it's made the ghosting worse again than the three, so we can chuck those, you know, chuck those away, they're rubbish. So as I was heading in the right direction of the belt tension, I thought I'd go back and check the belt tension again, um, in case I didn't tighten it enough first time. So I, I went and adjusted the y-axis again, and uh, I printed off another calibration cube. Ooh, there we go, on the y side, and then it's got even better still. In fact, the ghosting's almost completely disappeared. There's still, again, a little line here, a couple here, but it's definitely better than it was. So I'm fairly confident now that it's as good as I can make it by tightening the belt. I didn't want to push it too much again because I didn't want to cause binding, but it definitely looks a lot, lot better. So the next thing to adjust was the acceleration and jerk settings uh, in your machine's firmware. There's different ways of doing it. You can either log into something like Pronterface and, and use the M commands or I'm, I've got the TH3D firmware flashed on my printer which lets you do it through the firmware settings. I'm pretty sure you can do it on most Marlin firmware through the settings but it's I think it's made it a little bit easier to access on the TH3D firmware. We'll go across to the printer and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, here we are back at the printer. Now if you go into your menu settings, go down to control and then go down to motion You've then got acceleration and jerk. Now acceleration um, can help a little bit with ghosting. I've turned mine down to 500, which, um, yeah, well, I tried it. And then the jerk settings, again, I've set those to eight. I think the default is 10. I did try putting them at five, but it didn't seem to like it, so it's gone back to eight now, so that's where I've left it anyway. And I'll go back to the main menu. Right, back over to the bench. Okay, so here we are back at the bench, and I printed another cube with uh, the change acceleration and jerk settings. And as you can see, well, you may or may not be able to see, the camera's not really picking up very well, but I think the ghosting has actually been slightly improved again. It, it does look slightly less, not quite so pronounced around the edge of the Y. And at the very top, similar amount. It does look slightly better to the naked eye anyway. I think the camera might be picking up some of it. It's difficult to say. But generally, it looks a lot, lot better. Um, I can compare it to the first cube, which was one of these right here somewhere. There we go. Overall, the, the ghosting has been massively improved. I'm really, really happy with it. It's made a big difference. Um, the acceleration jerk settings you can also change in your slicer, in most slicers anyway. I use Cura, and you can change the acceleration jerk settings in Cura, which may help you save when you happen to go through your, um, your, your, your box or your settings on board your actual printer. But um, make sure if you do go through the printer settings that you, once you've got them right and you're happy with them, make sure you store the settings, otherwise next time you power your printer off, you're gonna back to square one again. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all for me. I'm really happy with the results. So if you're happy with this video and you, you like what I've done, subscribe and uh, tick the bell icon so you get the, get the uh, updates whenever I've done a new video. And if there's anything you'd like to see me do in the future, leave it in the comments and I'll see if I can put a video together. I do plan on doing one about some more prints that I'm doing and also some of the upgrades that I've done or I'm planning to do to the CR10. So yeah, good to, uh, good to see your input. Thanks guys, take care.